Benny Johnson and welcome to another iOS development tutorial. In today's episode I'm going to show you how to actually create connections between the UI elements you added in the last tutorial and the code we actually created for our separate view controllers and this is quite simple in Xcode uh, there's two different methods that I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the slow method first and the easy and quick method. So you may be asking what are these connections well if you can remember back to the MVC where I talked about the controller talking to the view the view talking to the controller and the model talking to the controller etc etc well that's basically what we're doing we're creating these connections to allow this communication to happen um, and allow us to say for instance get the text from text field know when a button has been tapped change the text in our labels and just change things programmatically all right from our storyboard and in our code so let's go ahead and I'm gonna jump into the iBank loan view controller dot H which is their header file and I'm gonna put some code in between this at interface and at end so it's really important that you just put the code in between those and first off we're going to declare some properties now you may be asking what are properties well properties are just basically uh, things that we use with variables to create getter and setter methods now you may be asking what are these getter and setter methods well getter and setter methods allows us to get the variable get the data and setters allow us to set the data in the variable now you may be asking well, we can already do that by directly accessing the variable. Why would we want to create a method to do that? Well, basically, it's good programming practice, right? It allows for subclass ability, uh, allows us to check conditions, make sure that um, when we subclass something that we're not setting the variable to a number instead of a string, etc., etc., doing those getter and setters allow us to check stuff before those events happen. So it's generally good practice, you want to keep up with it and we're going to use properties a lot in Objective-C when creating outlets or just standard variables for your classes. Now I mentioned the word class. What is class? Well a class is a blueprint for an object. Um, if you can think back, if you can think of houses right houses have a blueprint so the builders know how to build it and what rooms it's going to have etc etc well that is basically a class a class declares all its variables its functions etc etc the object is the actual house from that blueprint so the blueprint is used to make the house and the class is used to make the object all right so keep those things in mind so let's get to it we're gonna type the syntax for properties which is at property and you'll see at come up a lot in Objective-C it's just basically telling the compiler that this is an Objective-C code it's not actually C codes because Objective-C is C with lots of stuff compacted on top of it right and we're just telling the compiler hey, no this is Objective-C it's not C so we don't get warnings and whatnot. Um, next we're going to put bracket strong and this is part of memory management. I'm not going to talk about reference counting and all that crap for now. It's going to be non-atomic, just means it's not multi-threaded um, and generally properties are non-atomic. Just to keep that in mind. Next we're going to put IB outlet and this basically says to Xcode this is going to be an outlet. I'm going to hook up a UI element to this property. So uh, put it aside and when I'm connecting, creating connections between my storyboards and my UI elements with my view controller, uh, give me that option for this property. And we're going to type UI text field because it's going to be a UI text field. Next, we're going to put asterisk. Now, asterisk represents pointers, and uh, I'm going to go into more details about pointers, but basically, generally with objects, we use pointers instead of actually moving the object around. Like, we have pointers are just basically addresses 
to objects in memory. And we do this in the real life. We don't we don't carry our house with us. We don't carry our house to work. We don't take our house everywhere because it's big and heavy. So all we do if we if we want someone or a friend to come to our house, we don't take the house to their house, right? We just give them our address, right? We just give them the address of the object. So if they want, they can go get the data from the address. They don't have we don't have to give them the house or carry the house with us. We just give them a, an address, right? Well, that's basically how pointers work. It's an address to a UI text field object. We don't pass objects around because they're big and heavy, right? Just the same way we don't pass our house around to everyone. Um, gosh. Alright, so it's going to be an IB outlet, it's a UI text field type, and it's going to be a pointer which is called a mount, right? Which is an address for an object. Next we're going to do basically the same thing. So at property strong atom non atomic it's going to be an IB outlet and this time it's going to be a UI label type and I'm going to call it period label. Right? Going to make another property. It's going to be strong, it's going to be non atomic. IB outlet and this time it's going to be UI label it's going to be a pointer to a UI label which is called interest label I'm jumping ahead of myself here end it with a semicolon as always uh, and one more property strong atomic comma non atomic uh, IB outlet UI label asterisk and this is going to let me check this is going to be our total payment label alright so that's basically our properties we're declaring which are outlets to allow us to get the data from our UI elements and also change the data inside these elements so that's our properties we also have to declare a special function right a function for our button so it knows what code to execute when that function when that button is actually pressed so the syntax for that is dash open bracket IB action because it's part of the interface builder then the selector is whatever you want to call it so I'm going to call it submit because that's a button and we also have this bracket ID and this is just basically a parameter for our um, for our function now you can leave it as ID but I prefer to statically type it now this means that when the function is called, it's going to be called from an object like a button. So if we have ID there, we don't know what properties we can access for that button, etc. etc. So that's why I like to specify the type of like parameter it is. And it's going to be a pointer again to a UI button. Alright. And we end that with a semicolon. Now you may have heard me talk about parameters and uh, return types, etc., etc., for functions. Let's talk about a function that you are already familiar with that actually has a return type and actually has a parameter. And these are grouping brackets, if you can remember back to mass. So basically, if we have an equation like 5 plus. Uh, 10 times 2 right we have that function there and what this does is what well, we're going 5 plus 20 which is 25 we're not going 
5 plus 10, which is 15 times 2, right? Because this bracket returns 20, okay? We don't just do that bracket for nothing. We return 20, so then we can add 5 plus tw uh, 20, which is 25, right? So that's the return type, and it's returning a value for us. The same with this um, submit function here, it's going to return an IB action. We're not just doing a function, we're returning some value. And you can see how return types are useful in this situation where we want to find a v out a value before we actually do the full picture or the full function. And that's why we use return types. So let's give an example of a function with a parameter. Say we have 6 plus 2 times 5 times 2, right? This is a parameter, right? The 2 is a parameter because the 2 is a parameter because it's changing the result of our function. We're saying this is equal to 6 plus 2. 10 times 4, right? Because we're actually changing the value of these brackets. We're passing that 2 value in to times those functions by the numbers in there by 2. Alright, so that's an example of a parameter. It returns 10 times 4 instead of um, returning 10 because we're passing that parameter in and that's how functions work we have a return type which is our bracket which is the result of our bracket we also have this value that we're passing in and that simple example is how we use them in mass if you can think of the return type as brackets that return a number for, before you actually do the whole equation and a parameter as something you pass into those groups to actually change the outcome. And we do that a lot with functions. You might want to return a number, you might want to return a date, etc, um, etc. Et so that's what, what functions are.